We're going to have to deny his, his communications. We're going to have to deny his use of the radar spectrum, and we're going to have to do it very quickly. It's been said that a war in Central Europe will be decided within the first five days. Air power will determine the outcome, according to the experts. But that's only part of it. It's an EW world out there today. And Soviet emphasis on electronic combat compounds the problem considerably. Because with one third the tactical force of the Warsaw Pact nations, protecting the assets we have across the board becomes extremely critical. The view that we see here at the Tactical Air Warfare Center most impressive is the massive Soviet buildup of fighter forces. And not only in uh, conventional forces, but their tremendous dedication to increasing their strategic forces as well. Secondly, uh, we've got to remember that uh, we're fighting on their home ground. And uh, any scenario that you can think of that's in the Central European environment is going to put us at a disadvantage. And they are going to have a, a tremendous head start on us, not only in the posturing of their radar systems, their surface-to-air missile systems, but all of their forces. And we are always going to be in a, in a defensive position from the beginning of, of hostilities. There are those who say that numbers alone don't really tell the story, that we still have a technological advantage. Well, I hope we do. Uh, unfortunately, however, uh, not only have the Soviets chosen to close the gap quantitatively, but they've also chosen to close the gap qualitatively. And they're starting to develop for themselves some fairly highly sophisticated airplanes, uh, very highly sophisticated fighters that will have a look down uh, and a shoot down capability, uh, something that they haven't had in the past. And in the, uh, in the era of the radio electronic combat, we've seen a massive buildup of Soviet ground-based uh, radars. Their philosophy is to develop a radio electronic combat process that will deny our use of that electronic spectrum. And we find it uh, very formidable indeed. How are we combating that? Well, we're going to have to take them on the electronic combat arena. And we've made a, a very conscientious effort to do that. The U.S. Air Force, I think, is, is leading the way at developing a, a good, strong electronic combat resource. Specifically, what kind of equipment are we talking about? We're talking about the vanilla fighters that we've always had in the past, augmented by some very highly sophisticated airplanes. Some airplanes that can confuse and degrade the Soviet IADs, for example, which is their integrated air defense network. We also have to degrade the system itself. That is to say, uh, the radars have got to be drawn down. We know they have a lot of them, and uh, we know they're all over the, the Central European battlefield. We've got a, a system called the EF-111 that uh, uh, is specifically set up with an ALQ-99 jamming platform. And uh, its job is to jam those Soviet uh, radars. And we, th we think the EF-111 uh, will provide for us a, a very effective synergistic effect utilizing our tactical aviation. You say synergistic. I mean, uh, coupled with our uh, F-16 attacks, coupled with our F-111 attacks, coupled with our uh, suppression of the enemy air defenses, will all be augmented by, well, perhaps a multiplier effect, by, by utilizing the EF-111 and, uh, and these jamming platforms. How fast would things go if the Warsaw Pact nations came to the conclusion that now is the opportune moment for an attack? My judgment would be that uh, it would be four or five days. We're not going to have the luxury that we had in World War II of building uh, up a, a tremendous armada to be able to take to the enemy. This time we're going to have to use what we've got. It's going to be a come as you are war. If it goes a few days longer than that, it really doesn't make much difference because we just don't have the time to tool up and, and rebuild. How does the EF-111 fit in here? If we can degrade those command and control procedures, if we can degrade the information flow that is coming from his radar sites, his early warning radar sites, then he's not going to be able to function. He's got to be able to see us to, to destroy us. Blinding the enemy, confusing and disrupting their radar network. That's the role of the EF-111A, the U.S. Air Force Electronic Combat System. Now in production at the Grumman Aerospace Corporation. 
The swing wing airplane comes over the fence as an F-111 fighter bomber. Less than a year later, it leaves as the world's most advanced tactical jamming system. In between, the long-range strike aircraft is completely stripped down with a bare hull, everything taken out. Then, all new wiring, structural buildup, installation of mechanical systems, installation of avionics systems, jamming, self-protection, and terminal threat warning systems. It's a total production effort, resulting in a total ECM system, offensive and defensive. Performance-wise, the EF-111 flight envelope remains essentially the same as the F-111. I think that because it is a, an F-111, because it has the sweep wings, because it has the all-weather capability, it gives us a high-speed penetrating aircraft, one that allows us to get a low altitude and go right in with the fighters. In Central Europe, specifically, what will the EF-111 buy us? We see the, uh, the EF-111 as, uh, as having a, at least three primary missions. One of them would be a barrier standoff mission where the EF-111 might provide jamming of the Soviet radars so that they can't see what we have coming against them. I think the airplane can be used very effectively also to support uh, our close air support aircraft or our battlefield air interdiction aircraft. I guess you would call that a close-in jamming. And the third role that I would see the EF-111 playing is that of a penetration aircraft going with our deep interdiction aircraft, and he could be escorting them. Is there any track record on how well the EF-111 integrates with our other aircraft? Yes, we, we've looked at, uh, at some scenarios, uh, both in, in Las Vegas, in what we call a red flag, or even in a separate green flag exercise. And we've been able to integrate the EF-111 along with the F-4G, for example, which is one of our strike aircraft, and our F-16s and our F-15s into a hypothetical uh, Central European scenario in the Nellis Desert. And we found that it's, uh, it's a highly effective airplane. Are there other uses for the EF-111? It can be used in a pathfinder role. It can be used in a peaceful role. And there's a number of, uh, a number of areas where it could obviously uh, function as a, as a lead aircraft uh, with a very large formation of fighters. Okay, today's mission will be a pin escort. There'll be uh, two EFs with uh, four strike packages, uh, four ship, and each one of those will be uh, splitting into two primary mission numbers. Uh, General, as you think about and plan for the future, what is it that most shapes your thinking? Uh, our role in the military is to make sure that we have a credible uh, strategic deterrent posture, as well as a a tactical or a conventional deterrent posture. We've got to ensure that we don't let the Russians get too far ahead of us in either of those two spectrums. Uh, we've got to keep pace technologically to stay with them. To stay up with technology then, that's the key. It always has been, of course. In the era of electronic combat, however, every strategy, every tactical system, offensive or defensive, is geared to effective electronic countermeasures. Not only to counter them, but to counter their counters. Because if we don't, we're allowing him to develop not only an acquisition system, an intelligence system that can find us, but also a tracking system that can defeat us. We need to take that away from him. And the way to take it away from him is by utilizing some jamming platform like the EF-111.